t I'll tackle this one is how can you monitor high risk for uterine rupture during pregnancy with known thin spots in the uterus? So what this question is asking is for someone who has had a previous cesarean section um, and we do ultrasounds and there may be a spot in the uterine wall that we think is thin. Um, and is there a way to monitor um, to see if that becomes a concern and to use that to direct or guide um, uh, counseling regarding the potential for a trial of labor after cesarean because of what we see on ultrasound? And the answer is this. There have been studies, nothing show, has shown that that changes anything um, because it's an ultrasound. It's not, it's not a, the best way to evaluate the uterine wall. So we do not use that uh, and monitor that, uh, the, that where that scar would be, um, which we can tell where the, you know, where the scar might be on an ultrasound on someone who's pregnant again after a cesarean. We do not monitor that for thickness or use that to guide um, how we counsel a patient regarding a TOLAC. Uh, trial labor after cesarean. So I know there are places that do that. If they're doing that, it's not because there's any science out there that shows it. Um, I deal high risk. All my patients are high risk. Multiple have had cesarean sections and we do not do it. And it hasn't changed uh, our outcomes at all. What about you? Do you, uh, you know, get surveillance on any of your prior cesarean sections to see if they have a th thin segment? Mm -mm. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. And I do uh, a yeah, lot of VBAS, I, uh, but I, I don't do mm -hmm. that. I, yeah, I care more about the op report um, than yes. anything. It's just finding yeah. that out, if mm -hmm. possible, if it's accessible. But no, mm -hmm. I don't really evaluate mm -hmm. it. Sometimes the MFM reports, I have actually MFMs do all of my um, all my anatomy scans and okay. all my nuchals. And so, you know, sometimes they'll make mention of the scar, but I never like actually mm -hmm. use it to make um, yeah. a determination if they're a good patient or a good candidate for um, a TOLAC. Now, it, if there is a placenta previa or a low-lying placenta in someone who has had a previous cesarean section, that's a different ballgame. That's just more worrisome that there could potentially be a growth of the placenta into the previous uterine scar, especially if there's a previa, placenta previa that remains. But again, um, it's, there's no data, and there are studies on it. There's quite a few, actually, showing that there is, uh, it changes the outcomes of anybody, or we should be doing it to use it as a guidance for TOLAC. So the answer is, we don't do it. Okay. Now, no, I'm just, before I move to the next question, I'll just say if you've had a prior history of a uterine rupture and retained your uterus and you were able to fix it and you're wanting to get pregnant again, my recommendation would be to have a preconception consult with a maternal fetal medicine specialist to determine a plan of care for your pregnancy uh, in consultation with your OB. Um, is that kind of how you do If you know someone that's had, you had a patient with a prior uterine rupture, just to uh, look at the operative port first and foremost, especially if that patient wasn't yours and they're coming to you with the next pregnancy uh, and then come up with a plan of care. Is that kind of how you handle it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny that you mentioned that because actually someone just asked that in the, the chat asking if they're mm. at risk of having another one. They had an unscarred um, uterus and had a rupture. And then mm -hmm. she said that was she at higher risk of having it again. So yeah, well, yeah. I, I, well, I have, if someone asked that, I just talk about that. So basically the stats are this. Um, so this is kind of what, I drew this beforehand, if you can see this. This would be the cervix. I love it. This is the uterus. And this is where majority of cesarean scars or, or incisions are made is in the lower uterine segment. The reason why is because that's a thinner segment, um, especially in someone that's been laboring, but even in someone that's not. Up here is the thicker, more muscular part of the uterus, and that's called the active segment. So if the uterine scar stays in that part and, you know, that's it. And, you know, we have, and it's called a low transverse cesarean scar. The risk of uterine rupture, the most recent data says, is about if you were to try, try do a trial of labor after cesarean, is about 6%. Then if we get the op report and we see that it was extended up into the active segment, or there was a prior classical, the classical means the entire incision was done in the active segment. That is, you cannot do a trial of labor because the, user, the risk of uterine rupture is too high. Um, now, sometimes you'll get an operative report and they'll say there was an extension into the active segment. Or there was a J incision, which means that it was like this and up and down, or a T, inverted T incision. You know, all of that's going to guide you uh, as to how uh, to counsel about the possibility of a TOLAC and the risk of rupture. But basically, anything that goes into the active segment is an increased risk for uterine rupture. Um, and the repeat rupture rate is as high as 32%, but somewhere between 15 to 32% if mm -hmm. that incision is a classical incision or extended up into the active segment. 
So, you know, it's very important to know, um, uh, especially if you're going to a doctor for the first time and you've had a cesarean with someone else that we get those operative reports so that we have that information to help guide you. Yeah, operative reports are always good. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of times, you know, like patients don't really know. Um, and yeah. I think that when it comes down to it, like, you know, a lot of times they're just looking at the scar on the skin. So they're like, oh yeah, the yes. scar on my skin is side to side. So they went side to side and I'm like, yeah. no, the scar on no, your skin like, may be mm-hmm. completely different than mm-hmm. the scar on your uterus. So mm-hmm. we need the actual operative report. Nobody yes. just wakes yeah. up like later on and says, hey, well, I know I had this kind of, unless your doctor actually sat you down and talked to you and about told it. You, hey, yeah. mm-hmm. Exactly. And that doesn't happen routinely in an uncomplicated yeah. delivery. A lot of my patients actually come from Mexico and they routinely do up and down scars on the skin. Uh, that's just how they do it. And then I'll have a patient that comes in with an up and down scar on the skin. The same can be said. You can't assume because the skin is up and down, you know, vertical on the skin that the same thing is on the uterus. And so then what, and it comes to that. And a lot of times I can't get records um, because it's another country. So then I talk to them, well, what was the situation for your cesarean? What was the reason? And I can kind of deduce from that as to whether or not I think the incision was up and down on the uterus or side to side, but sometimes it takes a little 